So, it's a quarter to two. Hopefully you enjoyed your meal, your lunch. Um, my project report for today and the, the talk for today is <coughs> about our private 5G campus network uh, titled Powered by Starling X and OpenStack. It is an, more than a preview of what we are planning to do, less than we already did. And it is more an, an overview, overview over the project than a technical deep dive. My name is Robert Holling. I'm a research associate from the University of Osnabrück of Applied Science. Welcome. I have a little agenda for today. Um, who and where we are located. What is our journey? Where do we come from? In the meaning of OpenStack and the Starling X environment. Uh, a couple of words about our 5G campus network project because that's the reason why I'm standing here. And then at the end, the link between all these stuffs, um, what has OpenStack styling is with the campus network to do with each other. So first of all, who and where we are. We are University of Applied Sciences, the largest one in Lower Saxony, Germany. This is Germany and we have two sites, um, overall roughly 13,000 students and more than 1,300 people's stuff. And I'm located in Lingen, it's a little bit outside from Osnabrück, so everything I'm talking about today is uh, for Lingen, not for Osnabrück. Uh, it's for our own faculty. Anyway, of that one, 2,200 students, roughly. There's a bird view of our campus. We are located in this big hall, former railway repair station, over 100 and don't know, 50 years old. Um, with a small DC we can use with 158 units and opposite of that, a new building actually fixed, uh, ready fixed with a DC with 400 units and outside a mobile DC I will keep later on with another 158 units, roughly. So our journey, where do we come from? We called our infrastructure, we built up in the last year's open campus infrastructure. And everything began with an initial use case we had. This is a prototype we built up, my colleague and me, several years ago. There are some PLCs here below, any kind of program is running there. We are interested about the processes here above on the machine. So there are some pieces handled on this machine, four stations are there. And um, the software which is collecting all these data of this machine is the so-called IoT bridge. And uh, we built up this project within the learning stuff with uh, several companies and other universities over Europe. And, um, First of all, we installed it on-prem and then we recognized the potential of the software and said, okay, we had to uh, get a cloud stack and as a university, we are not, let's say, allowed to use public cloud in a big environment. So we decided to install OpenStack. So we are running this and a couple of other softwares in our own OpenStack environment since a couple of years. So the software has a connection to an SAP system running in a MacBook 300 kilometers away. And all the learning stuff is done in Moodle. So the students can do all their use cases and uh, experiences by themselves, most of them. And um, that was our initial use case. So this is the reason why we're doing OpenStack at all. Where do we come from, as I said? Um, yeah, a lot of on-prem, uh, any kind of virtualization of Hyper-V, um, VMware, ESXE, and whatever KVM we had. Uh, I put this map of, middle, map of Middle Earth, Lord of the Rings, so that is a dark mid-age we won't get back. Yeah, you know all that stuff. Uh, so 2016, we decided to install OpenStack by ourselves. 
uh, that was release Newton we did. And yes, if it had been four nodes or three or five, we are discussing all the day. We don't remember any more, anymore, but it was a really small uh, installation. Two years later, we moved on to Rocky, uh, already 50 nodes. Again, two years later, we moved to Usuri, roughly 100, 100 nodes. When I'm talking this way f uh, about nodes, um, that me is a meaning of any kind of compute, storage, networking, switch, router, in a hardware meaning, not in a software meaning, uh, 100 devices. Two years later, we didn't move again because of the 5G Campus Network project because at that time, what's, it was clear we have to change our architecture at all. So our plan is from the beginning of this year to uh, extend our architecture. I will show later on. So we have here our uh, below our OpenStack environment. We will set up uh, a second cloud stack with Star Starling X for the edge computing uh, use cases I will show. And uh, a third one, we are running actually the Sovereign Cloud Stack European Initiative uh, we are setting up when I'm coming back from, the, uh, from Vancouver at home. Why we're doing that? Um, in the most cases, we have no technical need. We have no economic need. We do uh, why we can, why we want to do that. Um, there's no economic compulsion for that in any way. So it's usually about proof of work, a proof of concept to show what is possible, what is not possible, where are the pain points, and so on. It's about the education of the students, for sure. That's our major work, to educate students. And another part is to transfer the knowledge we want into the economy that could be the local economy, that could be regional economy, international, whatever that means. So a lot of this, or most of the things, what you now see is there's no economic uh, reason for technical reason. The 5G campus net project. So first of all, what is a private 5G, 5G next mobile communication standard uh, campus net in Germany meaning? We have a um, so-called federal network agency, BNETS R, and there's a small bandwidth reserve for private networks between 3.7, 3.8, and 26, and others. But uh, for us, interested, uh, interesting is uh, 3.7 to 3.8. And you can use this for private purposes if you want. Uh, and it doesn't matter of universities or companies or uh, uh, foundations, uh, doesn't matter f at all. We got, you have to apply for it, we got a uh, frequency assignment for 10 years until 2032. And as I know, as I read, uh, over Germany we have 300 assignments um, for 3.7 to 3.8 gigahertz. Private in our meaning is we have no slice to public network, we do all private completely, cloud, 5G, everything is private. We have no slices. These are the operator models in Germany or in Europe, I don't know. Um, and we are doing that when here self-managed in a very narrow range, I know, uh, campus network. So that's it, what we do. Specs sounds too much. It is more the description of our campus net at the Hochschule Osnabrück. What we want is the tenders are still running, so I have to be careful what I'm saying now. But um, what we want is to implement an enterprise 5G standalone core self-managed in a defined range. Uh, the hardware and the software must be able to handle 20,000 subscribers, 500 licenses is the first step. What we want is... Um, 10 milliseconds latency between the user end device and the communication point N6 behind UPF. And we are not talking about ultra low latency at this moment. That is a default. What we want is indoor positioning with three indoor radios. And the accuracy must be below one meter. 
without any additional hardware, software, and something like that. Oh, that's a, um, yeah, one gigabit across all radios. We have mostly, or we plan mostly, indoor radios. We are not uh, sending all over the campus. We are um, providing specified rooms and labs and so on. 10 gigs over CPI and 100 gigabit uplink to backbone within the data center. And we want up to six cells. It's enough for our small combos. That's a raw description of it. Uh, as I said, the tenders are out or going out next week. I don't know exactly. Ah, uh, very important. We, this is a research and development network. We have no operation behind. Uh, we are not flying to the moon. We are not SpaceX or whoever. We are research and development. This is a simple graph of our network. We have here on the right our OpenStack cloud, the running project Sovereign CloudStack. We called it our mobile edge cloud yeah, with the attached 5G, 5G standalone core. There of you have the basement unit with the outdoor antennas. In the, we will have two, only two outdoor antennas with a power of uh, one watt only, and here the antenna bundle point, uh, up to 16 indoor antennas. Uh, that's the configuration of our planned network, and we have here one gigabit, 10 gigabit, and here above 400, or 100 above, and then 400 or multiple 400 gigabits between the data centers and the clouds. The 5G Campus Net project, um, you see the logos below here. It is a mainly a public funded project um, by the NBank, is a, by the state of Lower Saxonia where we are uh, living and working. There's a, a funding guideline called CampusNet, Ministry of Economy is behind there and uh, spent the money over the NBank. The volume is about 2.3 million euro. It is only invest, no personal, no staff, no energy. It's uh, really only invest. And there are some projects behind pending. So it's the first step. The duration of the project is five years. We started last year. And uh, we have two years for the implementation and realization of the infrastructure. And then three years again for testing of defined industrial use cases. And uh, for the realization of the infrastructure, we are two people more than less, uh, with a little help from outside, but that is the stuff. We have three areas of use cases. Um, this is one of them, autonomous robotics called. Uh, two sub-areas, one is uh, built up here with drones for uh, logistic purposes, for agriculture culture purposes. And the second sub-area is uh, about AGVs, um, Vehicles on the floor transporting goods from A to B um, within the plant. We have a second area um, called Smart Factory. So in the new lab building, we have on, uh, on the first floor a so-called shop floor. This machine and its several other machines are standing there, and we will um, put there on 5G enabled sensors and actors and operate all that stuff over our 5G infrastructure at the plan. The third one is about AR, VR, XR, MR, whatever. Uh, our colleagues from the logistics, um, there was a, had been a predecessor project three, four years ago, and they defined um, 35 use cases for the logistics, and um, a handful of use cases are still unsolved because uh, at that time they said it is impossible to realize that use cases with LTE because of the high and volatile latency. I, I can't um, judge over that, I, I don't know that. I'm not an expert on this use cases, but th that is a third area of that. So that are the use cases we are planning to do with the 5G networks. We have a couple of secondary project goals. 
Uh, it's in direction green IT, let's say. So we will get a mobile data center for this 5G um, campus network project. It's a 20 foot container, something like that, uh, completely autonomous from the rest of our infrastructure. And we will get a certification, a German specific Blauer Engel, it's uh, for sustainability. Um, so we have to record and to measure all our consumption and cooling stuff and so on. So the link between overall the OpenStack, the Starling X, and 5G at the moment. So as you know, you all know this picture, service picture, it's a little bit older, I know. Um, it is our existing private cloud. They're running, I don't know, something like 100, 150 clients and servers for our students at our faculty or our institute. It's not so, so big. And um, that's that what we have. What we are actual, actual doing when I'm back in Germany is Sovereign Cloud Stack. And it's an European initiative. As you can see here, the yellow bubbles are the open stack services. And uh, above you we have the container layer. So what we will do is to implement the vanilla style uh, the reference implementation, um, um, yeah. And we need first of all this one, and we are doing some researches about the container layer um, to separate them within the use cases. The upco upcoming project, you all know all this here, this architecture is um, Starling X. We will run also here the container layer and also the container, uh, containerized open stack. And uh, we will cut off this part on the shop floor and the rest will run in the data center. So obviously there is no technical need to do this. We do that to educate our students. Yeah? Remember that always. Okay, the fourth one is the end-to-end -end architecture of 5G. Um, this is from VRV Solutions, as I know. And then we put that all together. The near future is that what we want at a high level is we have still running our OpenStack cloud in one data center. You remember the first uh, picture, the bird view of our campus. We have one data center that's running OpenStack, mostly. and we will put the sovereign cloud stack within OpenStack and the container layer and the mobile data center. We will also put the 5G core into the mobile data center. And we will put a little bit of this on the shop floor and the rest also in the mobile data center or in the data center below. We just not decided it yet. And put that stuff all together. We want to make it as one network for the students, and the research projects. So always two heads on. That is what we want to do in the near future. And um, yeah, showing that use case for the shop floor. So uh, this is one use case for the students, for the teaching. Uh, put this picture again here. So anyway, the mid future is something like, as you know, we have our shop floor, we have our mobile data center, splitting that uh, for, to run that sovereign cloud stack, as I told. The 5G core is running for five years first, and then add on something like the project Magma uh, to get an open 5G core. We are looking in direction of open RAN, uh, something like that. So it's always moving. It's a lessons learned that, that we are always moving uh, and changing the, the architecture um, once a year or every two years. So um, probably the part below here, OpenStack, moves completely 
into the server and cloud sec, but it's not yet decided. So the major thing is put them stuff all together for the students. Yeah, what are the next steps? What is the status of this project? We have, as I said, the public tenders are on the way, so both thick tenders for the 5G core and the RAN, and the second is a um, mobile data center. Um, for the third quarter, deployment of the sovereign cloud stack within OpenStack and the container layer. End of the year, installation of the 5G core and RAN that will be done by external staff. And uh, then we will deploy the Star Starling X for the shop floor use cases. First quarter installation of the mobile DC. A lot of external staff will do that and help us. And then from the third quarter of next year, we will do the research industrial use cases. Uh, the teaching is all the way done. So this is uh, the perspective of the research project. OK. I'm working at the university, always sources for the, what I said, yeah, and the logos where I found. And uh, yeah, thanks for your attention. These are my contact data. I'm hanging around all these three days. Just ask uh, the guys from the Open Infra. Hopefully they know me. And uh, you can find me also tomorrow, yeah, 4 p.m. at the Marketplace Mixer and Thursday, as I know, 1040 in the Starling X workshop. So thanks for your attention. Are there any questions? Yes. Yeah. This is a feature of uh, the spatial triangulation uh, of the 5G network. Yeah. Oh, okay. It is an uh, it is named in the in the in the tender for the 5G network, and uh, it it is a must we want here, yeah. but we we have information that this should be possible. Yeah. Yeah. With with any additional hardware, with any additional sensors or something like that. Yeah. Yes. When you say you're doing this for the students, are the students responsible for deploying all this? And no. Then, oh. No. So there's, students are responsible for running applications on top of this? Yeah, yeah. 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 For the first is? step, yes. We, we're trying, but it's really hard, we're trying to, to implement this in the teaching stuff. But um, yeah, it's hard to tell other people what they have to do. So <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. That would be the best way uh, also to, to um, give the students the possibility to deploy something like that, yeah. Probably we could do this with an under and over cloud or something like that, so. Uh. Any other questions? It's not like so. Okay, then I'm finished. Thank you for your attention again, and uh, have a nice rest of the day. Thanks. Thank you.